Early second round lead at the PGA Tournament, and Claire Everett eliminated at Wellington. And in the weather picture, we'll talk about Hurricane Allen and the weekend forecast for Florida. Next 34 News is coming up. Statistically, the average boating accident begins very quietly. A nice day, a clear day, light winds, nothing special. A perfect day to be on the water. An open boat between 16 and 20 feet long. An outboard motor out for a day's cruise or some fishing. Two or three friends between 26 and 50 years old. Life jackets aboard, but not being worn. And someone drives too fast, or is a little careless, or has too much to drink. Or the boat tips suddenly, and someone who is not wearing a life jacket falls in and drowns. Play it safe. Wear a life jacket. Don't sit on the rails. Stay alert. Stay in control. Saturday, August 16 is the start of NFL action here on X-34. Our own Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who surprised the entire league last year with their run at the championship, take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Catch this season's football fever at 7 p.m. when X-34 broadcasts the Bucks live from Tampa Stadium. Don't miss this preseason opener. The Cards play the Bucks at Tampa, 7 p.m., Saturday, August 16th. Get to know great sports action on X-34. WTVX, Fort Pierce, Stuart Vero in the Palm Beaches. From Florida's most powerful television station, from Vero Beach, from Fort Pierce, from Stuart, from the Palm Beaches, this is the news source, X-34 News. Good evening. Organized crime controls at least three unions here in South Florida. That charge from a secret Justice Department document revealed today. The Justice Department study calls mob influence a national disgrace. The three unions named in the study are International Longshoremen's, Laborers International, and Hotel Restaurant Employees. The Palm Beach offices of the Laborers International were closed today. All three unions in Miami refused to answer questions about the probe. The state's attorney's office is looking into the possibility of a grand jury investigation in connection with alleged payments under the table by landlords renting out units under the Fort Pierce Housing Authority. Lawyers from Florida Rural Legal Services say they have evidence that some tenants have made side payments to their landlords just to keep their rental units. This practice, they say, warrants a grand jury investigation. But the director of the Housing Authority says they're willing to look into the matter themselves. I don't think that it's a proper matter for the grand jury to be involved in. The nature of it uh, would, to me, uh, be such that the grand jury might better spend their time serving the public and for the reason that they're, uh, that they're uh, 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 instituted. These are minor violations that, that have occurred in the program. The state's attorney's office says they'll know by next week whether the case will be investigated by their office. Well, there continue to be questions surrounding the way one South Florida mobile home park is run. Michael Williams has more. As we told you last night, many Plantation Manor residents feel that they're being forced off their guarantee rent by park owner Charlie Altman. One resident gave up his guaranteed rent after his original house was destroyed by Hurricane David last year. The legality of that move is in question. Well, in my opinion, it's certainly illegal. If the, if the gentleman would have come to, we asked the gentleman to come to us and to sign a legal complaint, we'd have taken it to the state's attorney's office, and with the aid of the state's attorney, we could have prosecuted the case. We've also been told by several people, including Dernley, that park residents have been harassed with rules and regulations until they finally gave up their guaranteed rent. And Dernley talks about other problems as well. Just recently, he wanted to charge the increased water and sewerage charge that was passed out by this uh, Fort Pierce. He wanted to pass that on to the guaranteed rentors. So we went to council in Vero Beach, Chester Clem. Chester Clem said, no way. Dernley says his group would like to help people who feel they're being treated unfairly. And if complaints are filed, Dernley says there could be a basis for legal action. Michael Williams, X-34 News, Fort Pierce. 
Palm Beach County officials are conducting an impact study on the effects of airport noise that should be ready next month. But a recent report from the Civil Aeronautics Board says that adding 44 flights to the airport would have no adverse effect on nearby communities. Today, the Environmental Protection Agency said that the CAB was looking at the wrong questions, a charge that the CAB did not deny, saying airports will be regulating themselves by 1981 anyway, and that means the issue is back with county commissioners. There is a great deal of county responsibility relative to the noise and the other environmental problems that may accrue from the, uh, from the noise or from fumes or other activities at the airport. This is the basic reason why we were involved in this highly detailed study to determine what those impacts are and how they can be mitigated to minimize or eliminate them entirely. Reddick says the county is looking at other action to relieve problems at the airport. Indian River County is at a loss over the illegal dumping of citrus waste into county ditches. The Ocean Spray Juice Processing Plant reportedly continues to dump liquid waste that flows from the ditches to the South Relief Canal. Florida law requires that waste be retained on company land, and the county wants the State Department of Environmental Regulations to stop the illegal dumping. But the DER says that the problem was solved last spring and won't do anything about it. The county apparently can't do anything about it, and Ocean Spray doesn't want to talk about it. Coming up, an arrest in the Holmes Beach murders. The electric chair may increase crime when we come back. With fuel economy being a prime concern for the car buyer these days, Catalano Volkswagen has the solution. This Volkswagen Rabbit, with EPA estimates of 42 highway miles per gallon, 26 city, it's hard to beat. Want something sporty? Take a look at the sleek Scirocco. Great styling. If it's versatility you're looking for, how about the new Volkswagen pickup? Or the Vanagon camper? The American-made Volkswagens are here at Catalano Volkswagen in Fort Pierce. Catalano Volkswagen has your car. Low prices. Big savings. Best buys. The best buy on flooring is at Scotty's. Right now, Scotty's is having a sale on GAF Prime Vinyl Flooring in colors and patterns to match your decor. It's easy to install and easy on your budget. Regularly $339, now sale priced at $259 a square yard at Scotty's. There's just one place to find. Low prices. Big savings. Best buys. Shop Scotty's and save. Tampa police have arrested the prime suspect in last weekend shooting of four people in Holmes Beach, just south of St. Petersburg. They picked up Richard Whitley this morning. He's wanted for the murder of a Virginia woman and is the main suspect in the deaths of a Tampa doctor and three members of his family. A study of homicide in New York shows that executions may actually cause an increase in murder due to the publicity and sensationalism surrounding a death sentence. The research shows the same phenomenon may hold true when a celebrity commits suicide. Uh, depression uh, is a mask for anger, essentially, and uh, anger is related to some form of loss. Now, the individual who has some uh, dysfunction in his emotionality uh, may identify uh, the individual who has uh, either committed suicide or has been executed as a loss of a significant person. Statistics show more than 300 suicides followed Marilyn Monroe's death in the early 1960s. Mark? Michelle, yesterday's fire at the plush Ocean Manor Resort Hotel at Fort Lauderdale Beach is being labeled suspicious now. A series of blazes sent smoke billowing through the 12-story building and finally forced firemen to take a young girl down a 100-foot ladder outside the hotel. 26 people were taken to the hospital in that fire. The South Indian River County Fire District won final approval today by the Vero Beach City Council. It paves the way for voters to now act on the issue in the upcoming September primary. The proposed fire district will take in the total area east of Interstate 95 and south of Hobart Road in Winter Beach to the South County Line. Responsibility for fire protection will shift from Vero Beach to a joint Vero Beach Indian River County Fire Department. Will be paid for through a special taxing district administered by the county commission. What voters will be paying for will be two new fire stations, the relocation of another, and extensive renovations to the beachside station. The project estimated to cost one and a half million dollars. 
A four-year fight between Florida's Department of Transportation and the Fort Pierce Utilities Authority could wind up in court next week. Water for residents and businesses on the city's south beach is supplied by a pipeline built along a bridge. The DOT had to make some improvements to the pipeline several years ago, and ever since, it's been after the Utilities Authority for reimbursement. But the Utilities Authority says if there were problems with the pipeline, they weren't pointed out by the DOT to begin with. They claim that they did not receive the plans. We maintain that there are certain things that they did in connection with the permit that was granted to us by the DOT that they could not have done without seeing the plans. So there, there is a difference of opinion in that respect. Brown says the Utilities Authority will try to resolve the matter out of court. If that doesn't work, it'll be left up to a judge. And Martin County gave the go signal to a, a huge development late this afternoon that's been the subject of controversy for the past several months. In a vote that came out split, county commissioners gave their preliminary approval to the huge Martin Downs project in that county. Its land area is actually larger than the city of Stewart, and it's expected to boost their population by 13,000 people. But opponents to the plan object to the density, claiming it'll bring too many people to a rural area and overcrowd their schools, roads, and bridges. The hit head of the citizens group that tried to block the project thinks the group succeeded in getting concessions from the developer. To date, we have accomplished a satisfactory answer to the school impact problems. We have, for the residents of Palm City, accomplished what we feel is a satisfactory answer on the water problems. Has agreed to contribute millions of dollars in improvements. Many feel that effort isn't enough. But the debate on whether the project will go forward seems to be over. And coming up next, the rally goes on, but the steam runs out. And first aid for your vacation in a minute. Pat Crowley draws a fine line in the post with pen in hand and tongue in cheek. Call 659-1450 for home delivery of the post. Long John Silver's is having a boiled shrimp special. 20 tasty shrimps served in the shell with tangy sauce, fresh coleslaw, and crispy crackers. Our boiled shrimp special, fresh taste by the shell full at a special low price. Long John Silver's. Our boiled shrimp special at a special low price. continues to celebrate 50 years of service, we remember the 1960s when shoppers found all their favorite brands at Publix, just as they do today. Swift's premium three-pound whole canned hams are a delicious value at $4.89. Make baked goods great with assorted gold medal flowers. Five-pound bags are just 79 cents. Limit one, please. And versatile white potatoes are now $1.39 for the 10-pound bag at Publix. Where shopping is a pleasure. Major retail store sales look as though they're at least on a modest road to recovery after taking kind of a nosedive this past spring. Heavy sales of fans and air conditioners are helping to pace the recovery. Most economists say that the worst could be over. Sears, the industry giant, has been hit hardest by the rocky economy. Sales last month well past the billion-dollar mark, but that's still a decline of almost 3% from last year's figures. Number two, Kmart, showed a healthy increase. The figures helped along by a sizable hike in its number of stores. Woolworth also did well. Sales near a half billion dollars, despite upward trends by some. Most economists agree that sales still refle reflect Hesitant customers and consumers and retailers will probably shy away from making any long-range sales forecasts. Well, the Wall Street orgy roared on this morning, but by afternoon it was almost just a memory. The stock market still finished on the upside. Dow Jones Industrials at 9.55, but at one point in the day it was up 10 points. 9.65, experts said it was profit-taking today. General Motors was charged today with selling at least 4 million cars with defective transmissions. The government says it could cost owners $50 million. And the last Pinto rolled off the Ford lines today, 10 years now since the first one made its way into this world. Michelle?
Well, when tourists gaze up at the Eiffel Tower for the first time, they're supposed to feel a sense of wonder and awe. But sometimes the high life of vacation travel brings on feelings of nausea and the sneezes of allergies. Carolyn O'Neill, our Living in the 80s reporter, has some advice on what to pack to keep you in the pink. Of course you want to have a good time when you go on vacation, but all that dining out and trekking through tourist attractions can wear a body down. It's a good idea to pack a little black bag of medical supplies along with your resort wear. Here's an idea of some things to include. Your medical travel kit should contain analgesics like aspirin to help alleviate pain and help reduce fever. Also include antacids to calm down on happy digestive tracts. The tablets are more convenient than liquids when you travel. Antihistamines can help fight the aggravating symptoms of allergies and colds. But remember, some cause drowsiness, so let someone else do the driving. A lot of people are more active during their vacations than any other time of the year. Whether you're shooting the rapids or just hiking the nature trail, it's a good idea to bring along some Band-Aids and some antiseptic cream for those cuts and scrapes. If a long drive, plane trip, or boat ride is on your itinerary, prevent motion sickness with Dramamine or Bomine. Don't forget the suntan lotion if you're heading outdoors. And finally, if you wear glasses, bring along an extra pair in case you lose them. You should consider your health and the local conditions. If you do have a medical problem, it's a good idea to bring along a letter from your doctor to ensure the proper treatment if there is an emergency. Carolyn O'Neill, Living in the 80s. And coming up next, part three, the final one in our special hurricane series. And Mike, with all the weekend weather, when we come back. There was a time when you could save money. Even when you bought a car, you could put a little money in the bank when you made a special deal. Well, there's still one place like that. You won't find it in West Palm or Fort Pierce. Head for the center, the Toyota Center right here in Stewart. I call it the Savings Center because you save when you buy and you save when you drive. So head for the Toyota Center on US 1 in Stewart. Invest in one of the great Toyotas and watch your savings grow. Sun is shining brighter every day. Thumbs up, whatever it takes, the sun will lead the way. Thumbs up, the sun is up. Thumbs up, day and night. Thumbs up, doing all we can to help things turn out right. Thumbs up, the sun is up. There's so much we can do. Thumbs up, thumbs up, the sun is up. Oh. Hurricane Allen is now in the Gulf of Mexico, but the storm did have a lot of us on edge. But as Eric Williams reports, South Florida was not completely untouched. Hurricane Allen pounded the Caribbean. The headcount at most South Florida beaches dropped. But today, it was back to normal. There was a small craft advisory from Jupiter South to the Keys. While some owners didn't bought to strap up their boats, some could still be found tied up like these in Lake Worth Canal. While most county agencies prepared for the worst, Coast Guard was in action. The Coast Guard Marine Safety Program is concerned with uh, marine environmental protection, and uh, definitely when a hurricane comes, that's an unusual situation where you'd want to protect the port and the uh, area around it. Uh, one of the concerns with the plan is, uh, let's say in a port of Palm Beach, that uh, any barges or tankers with uh, large bulk oil would have to uh, move out before the storm would come in. While South Floridians can breathe a little easier now, Preparations for future storms are still in the works. Until the beginning of November, every tropical storm will be closely watched in the Atlantic. Eric Williams, X34 News, in West Palm Beach. Mike Royer here with the beautiful weekend weather-wise. Gale warnings have been discontinued for the Florida Straits and the Keys. And really all that's left in store from us, for us from Hurricane Allen is a nice cool breeze. Sure, have some uh, stronger than usual winds, Michelle, but they've been subsiding. And although we may be safe from Hurricane Allen right now, we want to give, uh, advise everyone now that even though we're high and dry, we still have some tips on how to prepare for a possible hurricane if there's a next time. Stock up on flashlights and batteries, plus canned goods which don't have to be cooked. And don't forget the can opener. You might be without electricity during the hurricane and refrigerated foods could spoil. Be sure your first aid kit is complete. Pick up some extra Band-Aids and aspirin. If someone does get hurt, it could be six hours before an ambulance can get to him. 
But no matter whether you decide to leave or stick out the storm, you're going to need to weatherize your home. Make sure your yard is clear of all movable objects that the wind might pick up. And when you tape your windows, try to use some type of a packaging tape instead of the weaker masking tape. And also, if you have any kind of an awning or paneling or decorative woodwork on your house, make sure it's securely fastened to the house. Fill bottles with drinking water in case regular water supplies become contaminated during the hurricane. Make sure you have a battery-operated radio and plenty of fresh batteries. Use it to listen to civil defense and weather bulletins. And if the civil defense should give an evacuation order, get out. They're not given lightly. And the 5 o'clock coordinates for Hurricane Allen are 24.4 north, 92.8 west longitude. Here's a look at the satellite position of Hurricane Allen right now. Allen has strengthened back up to 150 mile an hour winds. The first squalls from the hurricane should, re should reach the Texas coast by tonight. And when hurricane hits Texas by sometime tomorrow, tides wherever it hit will be about 10 to 15 feet above normal. And uh, that'll be uh, along the Texas coast somewhere by tomorrow. Around the, uh, South Florida right now, 86 degrees outside, pressures at 30.05 and falling. Winds out of the east at 4 to 6, humidity 58%. High today was 93, the low overnight was 76, just scattered rainfall as usual for this time of year around South Florida. Across the nation tomorrow, showers will spread across most of the northern part of the country and it'll be a little cooler around the south. Here's a look at some temperatures for tomorrow afternoon. This morning, uh, out in the southeastern and the northern, well, long, where are we in Colorado, the northeast corner, and also in the southern parts of South Dakota, showers. Those were nothing, though, compared to what happened in Wisconsin. They had lots of flash floods and roads wiped out in the southern part of Wisconsin today. This is all along this cool front that we've been having most of the week in the middle part of the country. And they have uh, thunderstorm warnings out now for Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and New York. Most of the rain today occurred, though, in lower Michigan. Tomorrow, as I said, all this will just spread out all the way across the whole northern part of the country. And it'll also be a little cooler in the southern part of the country. Here's a look at the voters' forecast for South Florida right now. Jupiter North, widely scattered thunder showers on tap with winds out of the east-southeast at 10 to 15 knots. Seas will be running about 3 to 5 feet. Then for Jupiter South, a moderate chop on coastal waters as the Higher seas from the hurricane uh, calm down a little bit. Winds out of the southeast at 10 to 15 knots and seas 3 to 5 feet. Around the state of Florida today, mostly fair conditions. Again, showers from the Bahamas over to an area in between uh, Fort Pierce and the Palm Beaches. Moving to the west right now at 20 miles an hour. Most temperatures this afternoon in the upper 80s, low 90s. Here's a look at how things will size up tomorrow. Mostly partly cloudy. It'll be warm and humid with winds out of the southeast at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Highs in the low 90s, lows around 80. Sun comes up a little bit before 7. Says tonight, a little bit after 8. Michelle, just a chance of scattered showers over the weekend. Boy, it's a relief not to have to think in terms of boarding up our own windows now yeah. at this point. Thanks for keeping us posted. Right. Next up, Never Say Never, Sports is Next. Are you ready for the big beefsteak taste of McDonald's chopped beefsteak sandwich? A big chopped beefsteak, add some onions, sliver just for you. A great big taste for you. A toasted French roll, it's gonna taste great too. Pour on the special steak sauce, and then you'll understand. That's our chopped beefsteak sandwich. You're the reason we do it, nobody can do it like McDonald's can. We made it just for you. Chopped beefsteak sandwich, served after 10.30 a.m. You ought to bring your film to Eckerd's. This place is fine. But at Eckerd's, you get twice the prints. Uh, this place is okay. And Eckerd's gives you two rolls of film for the price of one. Mm, I don't know about this place. Well, now you know, whenever you have your film developed at Eckerd, we give you twice the prints on Kodak paper, two rolls of Kodak film for the price of one, and you don't pay for the prints you don't like. So you ought to bring your film to Eckerd Drugs. Yeah. Well, what kind of place is this anyway? 
A wildlife official says that one man could be responsible for wiping out a species, an entire species of sea turtles. A Miami federal grand jury has joined the fight now to save the endangered Pacific Ridley sea turtle by indicting four seafood executives and six Florida and Mexican corporations for illegally importing 90,000 pounds of turtle meat falsely labeled as freshwater turtle. It's estimated that 7,000 sea turtles had to be killed to yield that meat. Russ here with sports now, and uh, bad weather up there in Rochester yesterday. How's it going at the PGA today? Well, uh, I don't know about the weather, but I do know that the scores are awfully high, so uh, the golfers don't like it's it wet. no matter what it yeah. is. It's uh, Lon Hinkle with the early second round leading the PGA Championship at Rochester, New York. Hinkle playing steadily today with a 1 under 69 after failing to make the cut the last two times out on the tour. Hinkle had a 70 yesterday as we take a look at the leaderboard, and he is 1 under 139 for the 36 holds, and he is the early leader. First round leader Craig Stadler ballooned to a 75 today, three shots back. Now, Tom Watson shot a 74, putting him in danger of missing the cut for the first time since last year's U.S. Open. Claire Everett eliminated today from the National Girls 12 and Under Tennis Championship at Wellington. Chrissy's younger sister losing to Elizabeth Levinson from Miami in the semifinals, 7-6-7-5. Marianne Wardell, the top seed, won her match with Katherine Warner, and the Wardell-Levinson final goes tomorrow at Wellington at noon. On the baseball scoreboard this afternoon, it was the Cubs over Montreal, 8-4 in 14 innings. That one took a couple of months to play. It was the completion of a suspended game that was tied at 3-3 in the 10th on May 28th. Cliff Johnson won it with a grand slam at the bottom of the 14th. Regular game, Montreal wins 5-3. Gary Carter with his 21st homer. American League, Kansas City and Toronto just starting a doubleheader at Toronto. Big three-game series in New York starting tonight. The Yanks and the Orioles. Baltimore has rallied for 13 wins in their last 15 games, now within five and a half of the Bombers. The pitching matchup tonight worth watching, Ron Guidry against Jim Palmer. Well, in professional sports, there are many stories about fighting back against adversity. Courage can also pay off on an amateur level. Les Smith has the story. There's an old sports adage that goes, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. The Fort Pierce Hawks know all about that. The Hawks are a team of 13 to 15 year old girls who after winning their district were headed for what seemed like a sure state championship. But a serious automobile accident involving the team van forced the Hawks to withdraw from the tourney. However, the Southern Regional Commissioners made a special ruling and invited the Hawks to the Southeastern Regional last weekend. The second chance was all the Hawks needed. They won the tournament, not losing a single game. The Hawks next plane ticket will read Binghamton, New York where they will participate in the National Amateur Softball Tournament next weekend. However, once again, the team is faced with another obstacle, money to make the trip. So if you think you can help, contact Mike Green at 461-0277. Because as these girls have proven, adages can become wondrous reality. Les Smith, X34 Sports. Some reality for a Texas A&M running back, Curtis Stickey, today he signed a three-year contract with the Baltimore Colts, ending his holdout. He had previously turned down a $1.2 million multi-year contract. No terms of the agreement were announced. Well, Dean Chenoweth won't be driving his hydroplane anymore this season. Yesterday in Seattle, this spectacular flip while going at 175 miles an hour put Genoa in the hospital. Doctors say he has a broken right shoulder, multiple rib fractures, and some bleeding in the left lung. Genoa had won the first five races on the unlimited hydroplane circuit before yesterday's accident. The dirty word in soccer is an own goal. That's when you kick the ball into your own net. Not very smart. Well, Andres Eastrun didn't feel brilliant last night when he deflected the ball into his own net right there, giving the Cosmos their first goal against the Edmonton Drillers. Drillers came back to take a 2-1 lead right there, but Giorgio Canaglia sent it into overtime with a goal, and the Cosmos won it 3-2. Not a good start to the football season for the Atlanta Falcons. In fact, they were in trouble right off the bat. Last night against Seattle, Falcons opened the game by allowing Cornell Webster taking the kickoff 98 yards for a touchdown. Didn't get much better. Atlanta lost the preseason game 14-10. Dolphins open up Sunday at home against the Lions. Bucks start Monday at Houston. Saints go Saturday at home against St. Louis. And that's the sports. Okay, Russ, thank you. Coming up next, Claude Kirk goes Billy Carter one better when we come back.
There's a $500 bounty on Dickie Anderson's head this Friday night at the Palm Beach Fairground Speedway. Some of the top modified drivers in the state have been invited, including Gary Hot Shoe Baloo, to try and outrace the hottest short track driver in the nation, Dickie Anderson. Plus, heat and feature events for the late models and the Thunder Cars. Plus, a demolition derby at no increase in prices. Don't miss professional stock car racing at the Palm Beach Fairground Speedway. Southern Boulevard is five miles west of I-95. This Friday night, be there. Bill Schultz Chevrolet announces his year-end sale. The Big Hearted Savings Champ offers this beautiful dark blue 1980 Malibu for the unbelievably low price of $49.95. One round is all we ask to show you our wide selection, unbeatable trade-in allowances, and championship service department. This year-end savings sale is on now through September 25th. We're reducing our entire inventory. Cars, trucks, and vans must go to make room for the 1981 factory models. It's your round at Bill Schultz Chevrolet on South US 1 in Fort Pierce. Well, it's going to be about three years before a newly married couple is going to be able to live happily ever after. A double ring ceremony took place at Miami's County Jail, where the groom's currently serving a minimum three years for burglary. Best man, the public defender. Michelle? Former Governor Claude Kirk, who's now a Democrat, is pushing for an open convention. And to add some zip to his campaign, he's gone Billy Carter one better. He's asked Libyan leader Gaddafi for a $440,000 loan. And that's twice what Billy reportedly got. Kirk says, after all, he knows twice as many influential people as Billy. Mark? Nothing like asking. That's our 6 o'clock report. More X34 News coming your way later tonight, 11 o'clock. Next, Cronkite and Company in New York City.